Does walking prevent falls? This is a very important question. A lot of people, when they have a fall, they find that one of the biggest things that's recommended to them is that they need to become more active and start a walking exercise program. So I asked the question, is a walking exercise program an effective way to reduce falls compared to the other things that someone could try to do to reduce their chance of falling? So there was a 2011 study. It was actually a meta-analysis and it looked at 54 different studies and put all that information together with a question of what is the best way to prevent falls? And so that study, those 54 studies that it included, looked at all different types of interventions that could reduce the chance of falling. And one of the things that the study concluded was that adding a walking exercise program to any of the interventions doesn't, in fact, decrease the number of falls. So that's a, that sometimes is a hard thing for a lot of people to swallow. They, so many people look at walking as pretty much the primary way that we reduce falls. But a lot of the studies that look at walking, either as an intervention all by itself or as an intervention that you combine with other exercises, doesn't support the idea that walking is an effective way to reduce falls. What this study found was that when you took an intervention such as highly challenging balance exercises, and then you added a walking program as part of that, that intervention, that there wasn't as much of a reduction of falls as if you had only given someone uh, highly challenging balance activities. So what are highly challenging balance activities? Those are exercises or activities that someone does where it throws them off balance and they have to recover their balance over and over. Now, a great example of that would be trying to stand on one leg or just trying to stand heel to toe. What you have to do to have something be highly challenging is, first of all, look at the person's level of balance. So someone that has a really high level of balance, they're going to have to do something really hard like walk on a balance beam or maybe uh, leap forward to challenge their balance. But someone who's, who's really at risk for falling, standing on one leg or even just standing heel to toe can be a highly challenging balance act activity. So to, to give someone highly challenging balance activities, it would be a combination of maybe five or 10 activities that they would do each day. So when this study looked at highly challenging balance activities, they found that if you just do that, that there was a 38% reduction in falls. But if you do those activities, but then also add a walking exercise program, there was a much lower, only a 20% reduction in falls. And then many people ask, that, you know, that doesn't make sense. Adding walking should have only made it better. Well, it doesn't. And here's why it doesn't, because most people don't spend a lot of time exercising. And in all of these studies, it was an either or proposition. Either they did a full hour of just balance challenging exercises, or they did maybe a half hour of balancing challenging exercises, and then about a half hour of walking. So what the study showed was that if you took up some of the exercise time with a walking program, that there was not as much of a decrease in falls. Really what the study shows is that highly challenging balance exercises are really the most effective way to reduce falls. But if you add, if you take up time with walking programs, that that doesn't reduce falls as much because walking isn't really an effective way to reduce falls in people who are at risk. The study also showed something else, is that people that are at risk for falling, if they did a walking program that involved fast walking, fast walking meaning walking as fast as they could either on a treadmill or on level ground, that there was actually an increase in falls. So look at a patient who maybe has had a stroke or had Parkinson's. Having that person walk as fast as possible and training them to do that actually resulted in more, more falls. Now to me, this makes sense 
because if you try to walk faster, there's almost a different strategy, a different way your body moves when it's walking very, very fast. When you walk slower or more at a normal pace, it's definitely a different gait style. So teaching people who are already at risk for falls, already have balance problems, to walk very fast, that might actually be counterproductive. And it may put them in a situation when they try to walk fast on their own, they're much more at risk for falling. So um, definitely you don't want to have someone include fast walking if you want to reduce their chance of falls. Now, there's a second article I want to bring up that kind of supports what I'm saying and maybe gives you a, a little more insight into why walking itself isn't the best way of reducing falls. This study uh, was done in 2015 and it looked at 386 physically inactive people that were over the age of 65. And what the study did was it gave one half of these subjects, one half of the 386 people, a home walking program that they would do for 48 weeks. And then the study tracked both the group that did the home walking program and the other group, uh, the group that was just inactive. And they, they wanted to see if the number of falls in the two groups was different if the walking actually made the number of falls less. Um, and so what they found was that after 48 weeks, the group that was walking every single day in the, in the walking program had no difference in the number of falls than the group that was completely inactive. Now again, a lot of people are gonna hear that and just be absolutely in disbelief. I had a researcher write to me recently when I, when I uh, published a different video article and he said that I was completely wrong, that I had misinterpreted what I had read. Um, I understand that this kind of goes in the face of what a lot of people think about as the best way of, of reducing falls, which is walking. But what this study found was that adding walking every day to your regimen, while it does make you fitter, and it definitely makes you stronger and it makes you be more active and it's good for your heart. It's definitely probably something that will lengthen your life. It doesn't decrease the number of falls. Um, there's other studies I've read that support this evidence just as well. Um, study after study has shown that just doing a walking exercise program really doesn't reduce the number of falls. And I think the reason why is because for most people, when they're walking, it's really not challenging their balance. What I've seen in research that really reduces falls is when you're constantly challenging your balance. So if I go for a walk on level ground, that's not gonna challenge my balance. It doesn't make my balance any better. But if I go for a hike on very steep terrain, that would challenge my balance. So that would make my balance significantly better if I kept picking harder and harder and more difficult hikes. But that's the thing with a walking exercise program with older clients. A lot of times they're not gonna do it in a way that really challenges their balance. In fact, most people really try to avoid things that cause falls. So walking as an intervention, telling someone just go for a walk or walk more, that doesn't decrease their chance of falling. It definitely makes them fitter, but it's not gonna reduce their falls in the long run.